Hi everyone. On April 3rd, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a remarkable composer of church music. In fact, he is probably the most prolific composer the Orthodox Church has ever known. His name is Joseph the Hymnographer. Many of us have heard his name but really don't know much about him. Joseph, in fact, was responsible for the daily office of the Octuochus that we call the Paracritici, many services of the Menaean, many services of the Triodian, and of the Pentecostarian. In fact, it's estimated that he composed around 225 canons alone during his lifetime. Now, Joseph was born, we believe, around the year 812 on the island of Sicily. He was very devout. Uh, he was very studious. He loved the Holy Scriptures, and of course, he knew music very well. But during his early life, the island suffered an incursion by the Saracens. Now, Joseph and his family decided it was time to get out, and they were able to do that and went uh, north of the city of Thessaloniki in Greece. He spent there a number of years until around age of 15 when he decided to become a monk and indeed was accepted uh, by a monastery there. By all accounts, he was someone who was quite ascetic even at that young age. He slept on a leather bed on the floor and ate bread and water every day and during his prayers he did many prostrations. So he was someone who was very into it, we might say, even from a young age. And as it turns out, he was able to garner some support in these things by uh, someone that he met while he was there. And that someone was no less than St. Gregory the Decapolite. He and St. Joseph struck up a great friendship. And finally, St. Gregory suggested that, if possible, Joseph accompany him to Constantinople to visit the shrines there and to learn many, many things uh, as Constantinople was quite the holiest place in the empire at the time. Well, they obtained permission from Joseph's spiritual father and off they went to Constantinople where they spent a number of years uh, preaching there, uh, engaged in ascetic activities and generally growing closer uh, to the Lord. Well, at that time, unfortunately, there was a massive heresy rearing its head again, and that heresy is known as iconoclasm. Even though the Seventh Ecumenical Council in 787 was able to offer wondrously precise and detailed instructions about the veneration of icons and defending them in the true orthodox manner, that wasn't the end of it. And iconoclasm began raising its head, especially under the Emperor Theophilus. Well, at that time, Theophilus was so, so completely against the idea of icons that he began persecuting anyone that had them, removing them from churches, destroying them, and even persecuting those who were harboring people that were promoting their use. Well, at the time, it was suggested to St. Joseph that perhaps he should go to Rome to try and persuade Pope Gregory IV, who was a noted iconodule at that time, and see if the West could in any way help what was happening. Well, St. Joseph did not really want to go, but he decided to do as he was told, and as our Lord would have it, on the way there he was attacked by Cretan pirates and thrown into one of their prisons. It was not an easy thing for him there. In fact, he had to wear an iron collar all the time. But the trip was not without its blessings, because one night, a luminous personage appeared to St. Joseph, and he said, I am from Myra in Lycia, and it was none other than the great Nicholas himself. In fact, he gave St. Joseph a parchment and asked St. Joseph to read it, although some of the uh, hagiography uh, that is connected with St. Joseph says that he was told to eat this particular piece of parchment. But either way, it was a hymn regarding uh, the Lord and how if one calls on him that he will come to uh, that person's aid. Well, Nicholas also predicted to St. Joseph that the emperor would be dead soon and Joseph would be freed. Indeed, this is what happened. In fact, one night 
his shackles simply fell from his body and he was able to escape and get out of the prison and try to head back to Constantinople. Well, St. Joseph would not be ending his life without the visitation of yet another great saint of the church. St. Joseph, uh, at the death of St. Gregory the Decapolite, sort of took up his mantle because many of the people that were following St. Gregory saw St. Joseph as the natural successor to him. So St. Joseph took up this mantle and formed a, a, a monastery because there were so many people and there was none around that could accommodate them. After the monastery was formed, the brethren there elected him as abbot. And because he had a great devotion to St. Bartholomew the Apostle, who is also someone that was, uh, according to tradition, noted for having one of the best singing voices among the choir of the Apostles, well, he decided to write hymns to St. Bartholomew and to dedicate the monastery to him. But he wasn't sure if this would please the saint. So he prayed and fasted for 40 days. And then finally, at one time, when he was in the church, there was a priest, the great Bartholomew himself, standing at the altar, the great apostle, opening the doors and taking the gospel and handing it to St. Joseph and telling them that telling him that he would be a wondrous composer of church hymns and that he should write as much as he could to help all of the brethren, not only then, but for future years. St. Joseph, of course, was much taken by this whole thing, and then St. Bartholomew disappeared from sight. Well, after that, St. Joseph was rather easily able to write many, many hymns, and he did so. And not only that, but ultimately he was appointed to be the keeper of the vessels in the great church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, which he did and actually where he composed most of his hymns and was able to establish that important part of the Tipicon that both St. Theodore the Studite and St. Joseph the Studite also contributed to. So St. Joseph finally came to a blessed end reposing in peace, making a complete accounting of all of the vessels in the great church of Hagia Sophia and bequeathing to all of us many miraculous and beautiful hymns, not just the words, but the music as well. And he also wrote many hymns to the existing melodies of the church, the prosomia as we call them. And as uh, someone who cared so much about the things of the Lord, so much about the worship of the church, one can think of no better way to celebrate his memory during this month than to pay attention to the many hymns that all of us will hear during the Holy Lenten season. By his prayers, may all of us use our talents as well so we can also give glory to our triune God. May St. Joseph continue to intercede for all of us. Bye-bye.